At this time, we'd like to introduce our guest for the evening. It is Sally of the Believe in Vikings show. And here she is, Sally. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. How are you doing? Hi, guys. I'm great. Thank you for having me. Got to show off the NFC North shirt. Okay, I thought I'd have a little more room. <laughs> I'm good. Thanks for having me. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Um, thank you so much for answering my 11th hour message <laughs> the other night. I was um, watching one of your shows. Now, I know do you do a show with former Vikings, uh, Bryant McKinney, the left tackle. I do. Yes. Uh-huh. The big guy. So can you plug your content and where people can find you that and then your other podcast as well? Sure. Uh, so Believe in Vikings, uh, which is B-L-E-A-V, um, because it's on the Believe Sports Podcast Network. They selected that name before I came along, so I it's not my fave. But uh, <laughs> so we do that with Brian McKinney. And thankfully, because of um, who he is and the social butterfly that he is, he gets tons of great guests. So we've had uh, we have some really awesome guests a lot of the time. Um, I've gotten to meet Randy Moss through that, Nate Burleson, Jared Allen, um, awesome guys. And then I have another podcast called Sports in the City, which is a little more lifestyle based. And I do that on the local sports network here, um, KFAN. So, but full disclosure, I didn't have that podcast this week and that's the one I do a ton of prep for. So I'm not as prepped as normal. So bear with me. <laughs> <laughs> if totally I mess something up, because I didn't have time today. No problem. I mean, we have a decent amount of questions for you. Actually, one of my one of our good friends is a Vikings fan from New York. Oh, um, okay. And he's he's watching right now. So oh. there is another one of these in, in here. <laughs> What's um, his name? Gabe Flayton. Hey, hey Gabe. Gabe. Yeah. <laughs> Come uh, hang out. Why isn't he coming to the game? What a fraud. Yeah. <laughs> here he is. Hi, Sally. Vikings fan here in the comments. Um yeah, he uh, he's a big Vikings fan. I think Gabe's dad is from Minnesota. I think that I believe. Cool. Yeah, I think that's right. Yeah. Okay. Very cool. Yeah. I, when I was at the game last week, I heard you guys talk about it a little bit. So I'm still kind of emotionally recovering from that as well. So bear with me, but it'll be fun. Yeah. Um, speaking yes. of that game, I'll just throw you right on the spot, Sally. Where do you rank last week's come from behind win in Vikings history? Well, this our season has kind of been uh, marked by come from behind wins this entire year. Obviously, this was a whole other level. I heard you mention the Bills game right before mm -hmm. um, I came on here, and I didn't think that anything would ever top that. And then just what a few, we <laughs> few weeks later, um, a month later, here we are um, in history. I mean, gosh, I think that this is I mean, it's the one that is really sticking out for me. Usually the Vikings have a history of it going the other way, like the other team having a huge comeback um, after they get off to a big lead, just like the Minneapolis Miracle game, or mm -hmm. I'm sure there's a ton I'm not thinking of. So this this is definitely uh, at the top of the list for me for comebacks. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, well, I, I, I'm, I'm like my, my secondary team is the Bills, so that was one of the <laughs> – hardest games for me to watch mm -hmm. <laughs> it was it was tough but the vikings have really been impressive this year and part of the reason for that is justin jefferson and justin jefferson is just an amazing talent and that will probably become a hall of famer one year um but what do you think it is about justin jefferson that makes it so hard for these defensive guys to cover him like what is it about him that just he's just so electric I mean, I think it's just his ability to run routes, to constantly, you know, make quick moves that throw the defenders off. And I mean, look at his hands. I mean, you guys remember the Buffalo game, that insane yeah. catch. He, I mean, there's, it's, I don't know. I mean, I, he just has the intangibles that I think no one even expected him to have. I mean, you know, he was like more of a slot receiver in college and I, no one knew that he was going to be this deep threat that he has become. Right. But he just seems like he's constantly improving week after week. Folks, since we are live, if you have any questions for Sally, make sure to comment in the comment section. We'd love to hear from you. Um, I'm a big Justin Jefferson fan. And actually, the Vikings fan has a question for you, oh, Gabe. Okay. Hey, Gabe. How important was the crowd in the comeback? I thought the stadium would have emptied out at halftime. Yeah. 
Yeah. So um, I was one of those that kind of wanted to leave, to be honest with you. Uh, I host a tailgate and um, our tailgating is pretty amateur compared to what the rest of the league has for the most part. Unfortunately, we have very, very limited space. Um, So we have rules like we're not allowed to leave our stuff up. But I left all of our stuff up because I'm like, well, we're going to have to celebrate so everyone can F off. So I had like, you know, it was really windy. So I'm like, okay, we're getting our ass kicked and my tent's going to blow away and ruin everyone's <laughs> cars and all that. So I really didn't want to stay, but my friends kept ignoring me when I would say that. And about 20% of the people did leave. I th- I'm surprised that it was that low. But because of that, I mean, I ran into some gals in the bathroom and they were like, hey, we're leaving. You can move up to the 10th row. You can have our seats. So but the, I mean, honestly, I could not believe how in it the the fans stayed, at least in my section. They were standing up after the second when the second half started. Everyone was yelling the whole time. And I just I really couldn't believe it because I certainly thought they had no chance. Yeah, and part of the reason for their comeback, at least I think, again, I I was working, so I didn't get to watch the game, unfortunately, but uh, Kirk Cousins had four touchdown passes all in that second half. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, new offense this year under Wes Phillips and, you know, Chris O'Hara. How do you evaluate him through the first 15 weeks of the season? Well, um, I have never been a Kirk Cousins fan. When they decided to extend him in February, I thought about jumping off the roof at U.S. Bank Stadium. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like the guy. Uh, never have. I just didn't. I felt like they were trying to do this half rebuild, half not. They were calling it a soft rebuild. And I just didn't understand it. And wow, have I had to eat my words this entire season. I'm apologizing to him every week. And I (laughs) I was wrong. He has been so much more confident this year. And I think it's the intangible things. It it is that confidence because he went from having a head coach in Mike Zimmer, who would say for eight years, I'm hands off the offense. I want nothing to do with it. But then he would get up at the podium and say, well, this is a run first team. Run first, run first, run first. So he said he didn't want control, but then he ultimately had control, you know. So I think now he knows that he's playing for coaches and teammates who really trust him. And they're giving him confidence. And in turn, he's giving them confidence. And I think those are the intangible things that have really taken his game to the next level. A critique of his is that... He he can't he can't come back from adversity. He's a big personal stats guy. It's things like he can't go off script. That's been the constant critiques of him throughout his career, and I think this season proves that that's not the case. Definitely, definitely. And I mean that pick that he threw in the second half that was in the red zone. In the past, I feel like he would have shut down from that completely. And he just shrugged it off, and next drive was great. Yeah, totally. And Kirk Cousins is somebody that I've I've definitely had like my ups and downs feelings about Kirk Cousins. Like sometimes he looks amazing. Sometimes he's like you know the whole one p.m. primetime Kirk Cousins <laughs> debate with you know he can't perform in primetime, whatever. So one p.m. Kirk's coming out this weekend. Um, but I think something that's really important, and it's the same for the Giants as well, is that if the offensive line is good then the quarterback is going to be better. So Christian Derrissaw and Brian O'Neill are, are two guys that are that are really strong. Who? How do you think that they have affected Kirk Cousins' performance, at least this year specifically? Well, Christian Derrissaw was here last year, but he was not healthy. So mm-hmm. it was really up in the air of, is he going to be as big of a fix as everyone has been saying that he is because much like the giants, this has been a struggle for the Vikings for almost as long as I can remember. And until this season, their MO was that they were just going to shuffle the guys around at the line. Like sometimes you'd play tackle. Sometimes you'd sometimes even the center would play guard. Sometimes they were always mixing it and there was just no consistency ever. And I think this is the first season, despite the injuries that they have had a, a few weeks here and there, they actually have a stable unit for the most part. And Christian Darisaw has been playing phenomenally. 
I'm happy to see that because I, I like both of those players, but it is unfortunate. I know Garrett Bradbury got in a car crash Saturday mm-hmm. night, and he's out for Saturday's game. I mean, mm-hmm. who do you think steps up in his place? Well, um, oh, my gosh. The man's name is escaping me right now. It starts with an Watman? S. Yes, yes. Uh, he played decently last time that he had to play. I mean, whenever you have a backup coming in, it puts more pressure on the guys around him, obviously, uh, to step up. I don't know a ton about um, the Giants pass rush. You guys will have to fill me in on that. But I think that's a, a big benefit of having TJ Hawkinson now is that that – um, helps Kirk's ability to get the ball out faster because there's less guys to cover TJ now with, you know, you've got at least two or three on JJ at all times. It gives him um, more options to get a ball out quick. Definitely. Another comment here from Gabe Quick. Ed Ingram, can he stop tripping Kirk Cousins? If not, can we bring back Drew Samia? <laughs> you don't really want Drew Samia, really? <laughs> I forget where he's no. playing, but he's doing pretty well, I think. I mean, better than he was. I couldn't tell you where he is but... now. That's how irrelevant he was on this. So, uh... <laughs> I know he is playing somewhere because uh, maybe it's the Jets or something. He's he's definitely playing somewhere. And like most guys that were in the Vikings offense over the in the Mike Zimmer, Zimmer regime, they play better when they get to um, other. OK, I should have known, Gabe. I'm sorry. <laughs> they they play it caught me off guard i'm just getting to know you uh, <laughs> they play better when they get to other places because they are not so restricted in what they can do and they're not scared all the time that something's gonna happen i'm gonna so. i'm gonna ad lib some some questions off our of our script for a second but you mentioned tj hawkinson um and a couple weeks ago we played the lions so we had lions player uh lions um fans on and uh you know, we asked them how they felt about losing TJ Hawkinson. How how did you feel when you found out that you received TJ Hawkinson from, you know, a rival like the Detroit Lions? Well, it. I mean, my first instinct was, I mean, I was shocked for, for one. Um, right. But at first I was like, oh, gosh, I traded with Detroit again because in the draft – uh, the Vikings had the 12th pick, but they traded that to Detroit and moved back. And so at this point, Detroit has several Minnesota Vikings picks going forward. And in my opinion, Detroit is trending up. Um, so we'll see how that plays out in years to come. But for now, I mean, there has been um, an issue finding consistency at tight end for the Vikings for a number of years. They drafted Irv Smith, gosh, at least five years ago, and it just hasn't worked out. He can't stay healthy. And so that was a position of need. And so I really like to see them go out after a big name like TJ when they're in the situation that they are, where they pretty much had the North. They're on their way to winning the division at that point. So I, I, I thought it was a bold move, and so far I like it. <laughs> because he does draw so much coverage. I mean – you can't cover him, JJ, Adam, all of them at the same time. It's somebody's pretty much always going to be open. Yeah. Somebody mentioned Osborne. I think it was Daniel. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't JJ. mean to disrespect Osborne by any means. Yeah. No. Um, I, I think another thing I wanted to ask you too was defensively, you know, a lot of additions this off season, Jordan Hicks, uh, mm-hmm. Zadarius Smith and um, Harrison Phillips from the Buffalo Bills. Those three guys, um, they've done a good job, I think, helping the front seven. As I know, the back end of the, of the defense is definitely a concern for me, at least. But talk about those three players. Because um, I think, did Hicks replace Nick Vigil? I'm trying to remember if he was, I don't think he was on the team last year, right? He came no, over. He was, yeah, he okay. came over. And then the other ones that you mentioned. Well, again, I mean, they did, they changed the whole def- the whole scheme this year. So that was concerning because what's that going to look like? And also Daniil Hunter, after the last two years, he missed an entire season and then he missed the majority of a season. It, what was he going to be like? And Zadarius coming off a major injury with the Packers as well, didn't really know what to expect from any of those guys. So despite the yards that they've been giving up and – um the points it those guys I guess at least I mean Daniel's been great they ha- he hasn't had the sacks that he's normally had and Zadarius started out with with way more sacks and it's cooled off I think hopefully they're going to get back to that running the blitz more often um, they played a lot more man coverage 
last week against the Colts than they have by far. So I hope that they're going to start getting back to that stuff. But yeah, those guys have made, made a huge difference for sure. Yeah, totally. There, I kind of forgot a- who else we talked, we're talking about, <laughs> but um, yeah, I didn't, and I didn't think that those were not, not to disrespect any of those guys, but that was another reason I didn't really see the Vikings um, getting further than a wild card and maybe maybe a first round game because I didn't think they made enough upgrades that it was it was going to make a big of enough of a difference. But I was wrong about that too, and I love being wrong about the Vikings. <laughs> so real quick, I keep seeing some some puppy ears down. Yeah, <laughs> we have a, a needy Boston oh. Terrier here. Who <laughs> so has cute to be, has to be in the center of attention. So I love that. Yeah. Love it. Um, but so you have a lot of, obviously, you know, some reoccurring pieces, but one of the newest pieces of your team is Kevin O'Connell, um, this rookie, uh, head coach who obviously the giants are also, um, have with Brian Dables so and two rookie head coaches going up against each other. Um, but coming in, you know, you guys got 11 wins and, you know, it's, it's very impressive with somebody coming in that quickly and and performing that well so how happy are you with Kevin O'Connell and what are you expecting from him for the rest of the season well just on the record I I wanted Dable to be the Vikings coach I was really they're campaigning for it like every day that's who I wanted just because of the improvements that we saw in Josh Allen because of him and I yeah really wanted them to go that route but it ended up working out with Kevin O'Connell so far obviously uh, he just, I mean, when they let go, they decided to go a new direction in the off season, something that they just kept preaching was culture, collaborations. There was like five C's they're escaping me right now. And um, honestly, a lot, Mike Zimmer got a ton of blame for a lot of things that maybe necessarily weren't completely fair, but a huge issue was that it just wasn't a, good locker room mental health wise for a lot of people there was um just a lot of cold shoulders and a bad environment and I think we can all relate to that in our own personal personal employments if you're working somewhere where you're not happy it carries on and it's contagious and this you know for them it's their job so I can see how that was happening so to have not only a switch from a defensive head coach to an offensive head coach but somebody who is 30 years younger and can actually relate to these guys on a different level. I mean, he's only like a few years older than a lot of them, you know, and it just, I think it's easier for him to communicate. Plus he just has a different attitude and you can tell that they want to play hard for him. And in winning these extremely close games down to the wire, I think they've found the confidence that they can win them. And that's just another one of those intangible things. They know their coach believes in them and they believe in each other as a result of that. So it's a good answer. Uh, We actually have an off the cusp question here from Henry, who we all know is Hank, our third co-host who couldn't be here tonight. He asked you this question. Um, Hi, Sally. Quick question. Which team in the NFC scares you the most? Um, I don't think I can pick just one. I, I guess I'm going to say if I have to pick one, it's going to be Philadelphia. Yeah. There is obviously all of the reasons that we know Jalen Hurts and how um, talented he is and how hard that that offense is to cover. It Also, the Vikings got blown out by them uh, in week two. But really, at the core of it, it's just that – the thought of playing in Philadelphia makes me physically ill. Yes. Uh, we, we had our NFC championship <laughs> game there in 2017 and it was just brutal. Um, I think we all have PTSD from them uh, physically assaulting us <laughs> and throwing poop at us and everything else. So <laughs> I don't know if anyone can take that. So we're used that, to it. They're ruthless. Oh, we're they're terrible. They're terrible. They were throwing like, 24 ounce frozen beers at our head and stuff. <laughs> oh my God. It was so messed up. I'm guessing you were at that game then. Yeah. Yeah. That's... yeah it was, it was terrible. So yeah. them, but I mean, also Dallas blew the Vikings out as well. Uh, much more recently. 
and San Francisco has a really solid defense. And um, when it comes to playing the Vikings defense, everyone's like, oh, Brock Purdy, who cares? It doesn't matter. The Vikings can make him look like, you know, Joe Montana with that (laughs) defense. They made Mike White look amazing. They made Mac Jones look like Tom Brady. Um, It's the, uh, yeah. So I'm nervous of all three of those. (laughs) And I'll be the first to tell you, Sally, I'm a big Harrison Smith fan because I'm a big Mm -hmm. Notre Dame fan. And him and Patrick Peterson, you know, patrolling that secondary, they're aging veterans, but they're still playing at a relatively high level. Mm -hmm. Um, But second, building off your point, second worst team in passing yards allowed. What's gone wrong back there? Do you think it's the injuries to Booth and Scene, or or, or is is there more to it? Is there a coaching problem? What exactly do you think it is? I wouldn't necessarily blame it on the injuries on those guys because they weren't acclimated into the defense in the first place. Mm -hmm. I mean, Patrick Peterson has been down for several years. This is the best uh, season that he's had in a long time. Earlier this season was actually his first pick as of, or he didn't have any picks last year and this year was his first one to start off. I think he has three now, I want to say. So I, I think, yeah, it has a lot to do with age, but it's also in the secondary. There's Cam Dantzler, who, while he's been in the league a little bit, he doesn't have a lot of consistency in not playing injured. Um, there's Duke Shelley, who was started out in the practice squad, so he's brand new. And I just don't think it's fair for Harrison Smith to – I mean, Harrison Smith can't do it all, right? So – I, I th- what's important is despite the stats of them, I think they were last in the league on um, points allowed when it comes down to it, when the game's on the line, they figure it out and they've had many games that have ended on a pick two from Patrick Peterson, um, the Cardinals game. And was it Thanksgiving against the Patriots um, ended on a pick. Mm-hmm. So they somehow find a way to get it together in the last two minutes. Maybe <laughs> I don't know what it is. <laughs> quick comment here before we get to sam's next question completely agree harry styles is the guy (laughs) oh my gosh like that was supposed to be an insult (laughs) you guys know about that right uh o'connell yeah yeah a a little bit it oh i don't know i don't know where it originated one of your coaches said it at the podium oh one of our coaches said it well, we do have Andre Patterson, but I don't think he was there. While Gabe, hit us up and tell us who said that. By the way, we love Andre Patterson. Just a heads up. Oh, yeah. He's gr- – he's, Oh, Martindale. You? Wink. Wink Martindale. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm not surprised. So he said that he's just a blue-collar guy, and he's playing against Harry Styles. <laughs> so basically, like, I, I don't know. That. Yeah, you got to find it because it's really funny. And he has like a big stain on his shirt. And it's yeah. like, bro, no one no one doubted it. <laughs> that you're bl- it's okay. Like, <laughs> oh, that's oh really man, funny. I wish I knew where it was. But um, I forgot. What was the question? Did he ask a question? Uh, Sam, yeah. I think we're up to you now. Okay. All right. Harry uh, Styles. Yeah. Harry Styles is the man. Um, I know you you mentioned before earlier about you know, wondering about the Giants' pass rush. Um, they're pretty good, and uh, our run defense is not as great. But if you had to pick um, a key to the game for the Vikings to execute in order for them to come out on top in this game against the Giants, what did you what would you think that would be? Well, let's see. It it's it's going to come down to the wire no matter what. It 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 definitely is. So I don't know if there. I I think it's going to have a lot to do with uh, with Daniel Jones and how he how he plays. I know he hasn't had the best. I know he's a polarizing figure in you guys' world, um, as always has been Kirk Cousins. So I think it depends what kind of success he can find. Um, I know you said the run defense is, is better, and so I think it's important for Dalvin Cook to be able to get off to a good start, so he can open up some other things. And just not to be cliche, but whoever makes the least amount of mistakes, really, because I think that both of these teams are so close to being they could flip either way. Right. Like the Vikings are so close to being, you know, two and nine instead of 11 and nine. So we'll we'll see. But I, I think also, sorry, I wanted to mention this. Another big thing is that at this point, yes, the Vikings could move up to the two seed, but they're pretty much stuck at a three. 
I can see after the emotional win that they had last week and being that their seeding can't change that much, that they might get a little complacent after that whirlwind, whereas the Giants still have a lot to play for. And so they know that, that they're running out of time to get into the playoffs and that they need help from other teams. And so being in control of your own destiny is a huge motivator. So I think that very well could determine the pace of the game, really. At least it should. It should. Yeah. <laughs> but they don't really, always do that. I think for me, also, we're both, just for the record, I know you mentioned Daniel Jones. Both of us are pro Daniel Jones. Okay. Um, you know, lowest interception rate in the NFL this year. We're definitely um, clinging to that. But my key to the game, Sam, mm-hmm. is pressuring Kirk Cousins because I want to get into our pass rush a little bit and how important it is because our secondary is atrocious. Um, but, you know, we lost our best corner returning a punt um, in Adoree Jackson. Xavier McKinney, our young star safety, got into an ATV incident on the bye week, so he's out. <laughs> what? Um, yeah. yeah. We have DoorDash corners, essentially. We have <laughs> Fabian Moreau, who's bounced around the league. And uh, Nick McLeod, who's a special teamer, who dropped an interception. Um, we had a, we had a linebacker say "free me" a few weeks ago, and he got waived recently. Um, nice. <laughs> so for me, it's pressuring Kirk Cousins. It all relies on Kayvon Thibodeau and Aziz Ojolari against Christian Darrisaw and Brian O'Neill. Those are matchups that I'll be watching. Darrisaw is the second-rated lineman in PFF in the entire NFL. O'Neill is sixth. That's how good these men are. Um, if the Colts can get seven sacks, though, can the Giants get their way to Captain Kirk? That's what I want to know because Thibodeau has, what, Sam, three sacks, but he should have more. We yeah, should have more. Absolutely. He's gotten close so many times. I mean, Sally, I'm sure if you watched Sunday Night Football game, mm-hmm. you saw Kayvon Thibodeau play. Oh, for sure. He's a beast. And Aziz Ojolari – strip sack master i mean those two guys need to get to the pass rusher i think dexter lawrence too who's having an all pro type of year who um dexter lawrence got to play next to dalvin tomlinson for two seasons when tomlinson was a giant i think he learned a lot from dalvin sam and i think that has helped him um he has the best pass rushing grade out of any defensive tackle in the nfl nose tackle specifically i should say so that's my key to the game I would say that my key is has to do with the opposite, almost the opposite is like making sure that secondary gets good enough to cover Justin Jefferson because he is probably one of the scariest people on that team and he's going to run all over us if we don't contain him. Yeah, I agree with both. <laughs> the pass rush will be very important yeah. for sure. That's that's to, a good point. To, to making sure Justin can't even get open. Yeah. Really. It's going to be, yeah, it's a big thing. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. We'll see. It's going to be interesting. It's always interesting, regardless. Also, random question. Sal Spice, where did that originate from, that that name? Oh, gosh. I don't know. It, it's like it's it's been around for a really long time. But it started um, when I was, like, in fifth grade. Okay. Is it a Spice, Spice Girls Spice reference? Girls. It, originally, it was, yes. And it's just evolved over time. I was looking at it the whole segment, <laughs> and I'm like, I'm wondering, should I say something now? Should I wait? <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. I wish there was a better story, but, yeah, it's – it's just stuck, you know. Like it. I, I like it though. Um, Gabe says KJ Osborne on bubble screens is a new little wrinkle that I love. Also, Sally, do you think Thielen is losing a step? Hmm. Yeah, KJ really stepped up and he had big games last year where he stepped up for a play here and there. Like I know when they played Carolina, he got a, a game winning touchdown in overtime. That happened a few other times, but this last week, um, was new for him being that involved in the offense. And those are the opportunities he's going to get with Justin Jefferson being covered. So um, very happy for him there. As far as Thielen goes, yeah, I've, I've kind of felt like that um, for the last two years, but it's hard for me to say if that's not necessarily him and his skill level, or is that that Justin Jefferson is just getting so much attention all the time. I'm not smart enough to know the difference. So we'll yeah. see. It'll be interesting to see what happens in the off season um, because I, he's going to, there's going to be contract decisions with him. So we'll know more soon. 
he has scored three touchdowns in the last four games. There's, yes. There is that. Um, you know, Gabe used to joke around with us in the past that Kirk Cousins had feel and vision. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but now that's changed a little bit. But Well, uh, yeah, and that goes to I think now he just has – Cousins has more flexibility to change the plays. I mean, he just came out and said he wasn't even allowed to call timeouts in the first three years that he played for the Wow. Game. He didn't even have that much flexibility. So, yeah, when – I mean, Kirk Cousins isn't isn't the kind of guy – he's not a Tom Brady. He's not an Aaron Rodgers as far as personality goes where he's going to say, I'm taking – at least previous to now, I'm taking control of this team. I know how we're going to win, and I'm going to do it. Now he has the confidence and a coach that lets him do stuff like that. Um, So, yeah, he did have Theo and Vision for sure. (laughs) And wear chains on the airplane. Yeah. I'm shirtless. Who knew? Who is this guy? <laughs> that was Who funny. Is? That was hilarious. <laughs> I, I can't see Daniel Jones doing that. Like, no. ever. No way. Listen, no. I would have bet my life that Kirk Cousins would never be anywhere close to. I, that was That's true. Thing. At the beginning Maybe. of the season, I'm like, okay, it feels really weird to be like four and one. But yeah. <laughs> what feels more strange is that I think I kind of like Kirk Cousins yeah. as a person. Yeah. <laughs> My favorite thing with him is you what? like that. I mean, like that? granted, he played for Washington, so we used to play him two times a year for sure. Yeah, right. So we are familiar with him to an extent. But mm-hmm. Sally, just one or two more questions here before we let you go. A sure. um, couple players to watch for the Vikings, maybe one on each side of the ball, and then maybe one for the Giants that um, people should keep an eye on this Saturday. Okay, well, I mean, I feel like the offense is so self-explanatory. Mm-hmm. I, I, I don't, oh, gosh, I don't want to be so cliche and say Justin Jefferson, but because of the reasons you guys just mentioned, yeah, if he doesn't have a big, a huge game, there's a problem. And he's at over 200 yards um, the last two weeks, right? So mm-hmm. it, maybe he can get 300. I, I don't know. We'll see. Um, defense, I think Duke Shelley, who has been, um, Mm. rotating in and out, he has had some big flash plays from being a guy that nobody knew who he was to, he's had a couple interceptions. He's batted down some balls at some key moments. So I'm looking at something I've enjoyed the last few weeks is just continuing to watch his game evolve and go from being a practice squad guy to, a starter or this week, a rotational guy, I'm not necessarily sure who's going to get the start there, him or Cam Dantzler. Oh, let's see. Um, and again, this is going to be cliche, but uh, how do you go against Thibodeau and what, how many sacks he could possibly have? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, no, he's a beast and, and he showed it in prime time too. So like people are now really paying attention to him. Um, oh yeah, and his personality. Are you kidding me? Like, uh, yeah, what a character. We love him. We love oh, having yeah. him on our team. Uh, it How was, could you it's, not? It's it's yeah. He's a blessing to us. A um, couple players that um, I would I would say Justin Jefferson, but I'll, I'll lean in a different direction as well, and I'll say Dalvin Cook, um, just because of the fact that our run defense is not the best. So you know, Dalvin Cook's gonna probably be running all over us if we don't keep him contained. And uh, on the giant side of the ball, I'll say Daniel Jones. He's he's been some incredible human being recently, and and we've been seeing him play left and right for this contract and and doing everything he can. So I'm I'm going to be interested to see how how well he can against a vulnerable Vikings defense. Tom. Yeah. Um. For me. I'll start with the Giants. I like Isaiah Hodgins a lot. Very under-the-radar receiver who was with Dable in Buffalo. Giants have claimed him off waivers, and in the past five weeks, he has two touchdowns. So I'm really excited about him. Um, I also think Dexter Lawrence as well. You know, six and a half sacks, 53 pressures from the nose tackle position is unheard of. Um, First-time pro bowler then. For Minnesota, I think – I, I was going to say Dalvin Cook, but since Sam took him, I also like the combo edge rushers, Darius Smith and Daniil Hunter, kind of opposite of what we talked about for the Giants because Evan Neal's a rookie. I don't know if he's ready to take on that task. Um, Jones wasn't sacked last week, but they got the ball out quick. 
Um, that's why his yards were so limited partially. And then Zadarius Smith, third Pro Bowl appearance, 10 sacks. That concerns me a lot. He has a really good first step, and I think he could cause some problems for Andrew Thomas and obviously going to throw some love for Harrison Smith. I mean, there's so many guys in the Vikings we could talk about. So I, Eric Kendricks too. We haven't mentioned him once. Oh, Eric Kendricks is my favorite player. Yeah, he just he does it all, and wherever he needs to be, he just all the he's just there. It, uh, it's great. He's so dynamic, and yeah, yeah. I don't even know what else I can say about him. He's he's the best. Yeah, he's. It really doesn't always solid. show on the stats sheet with him, but he is always involved. Gabe has a key to the game. Keep Ed Ingram's feet away from Kirk Cousins. <laughs> well, yeah, that is that is a uh, big thing. Yeah, what, has he tripped him twice, Gabe? It has. Yeah. It was even twice in one game, I think the Washington game maybe. Yes. It wasn't great. <laughs> wasn't uh, great. That's pretty funny. And, of course, Good we're team. throwing Saquon in there. That's one other guy I forgot. Six best rushing offense in the NFL. I know mm-hmm. the Vikings – I would say they're pretty decent on run defense. Um, better. Like Sally, better, better, better than better than uh, yes, better than elsewhere. <laughs> but um, before we let you go, do we want to predict this game here? Um, I, I don't want to give anything away, but um, Gabe, if you want to throw in a prediction as well, you're more than welcome. One of our viewers threw in a comment before Tudo. What did he say? Tudo's a Giants fan, so obviously he went 23-17 Giants. Don't read the last part. I don't know why he said that. but um, I mean, that's a new one. Yeah. I've never so. heard Minions before, no. <laughs> Me neither, but Minions Stout. are cute, right? Yeah. <laughs> I used to have one on my keychain, but not anymore. Um, <laughs> Sally, who do you got in this game of- Score prediction, too, if you'd like. Yeah, so I'm thinking it's going to be very close, as I said, again. And um, I'm thinking around like a 34 to 31-ish. Um, very close. I think it's going to be a field goal or a couple points. I, I don't think that the four – is it still four points today, the spread? I think so. Four. I checked it today. I don't I, – I think it's going to be less than the spread. Just That's what I'm conditioned for at this point. And I think – I really do think that it's going to come into play that the Giants really need this win and the Vikings. It's not going to make that big of a difference. Unfortunately, that's how I feel, but hopefully they'll keep the the gas uh, pedal on the gas. Excuse me. Awesome. Sam, who do you got? I am thinking like uh, Sally said, I I think it's going to be a very close game. Um, very close in score. Uh, I think it's going to come down to a field goal as well, but I think Minnesota is going to come out with the win here. Um, they did surprise me last week. I picked Washington last week and, and the Viking, uh, sorry, the, the Giants surprised me. So maybe they'll do it again this week, but, um, I think that they're going to get tied at 24 for a lot of like the fourth quarter. And then it's going to come down to a field goal and it'll be 27, 24 Vikings. I do think, too, the Vikings are going to keep experimenting with defense like they did this past week. And so that's another reason that I think the game may not that the past defense they've been doing the prior to last week were great by any means. But I think there's going to be a lot different. Um, we're going to see a lot more rotations also to give those guys um maybe a little bit of a break too, since this isn't a game they absolutely have to win. But Ed Donatel has been, I mean, like I said, last time they blitzed more than they have this entire season by far. They've been playing with man coverage a lot this past past week they did. So there might not be a ton of consistency at defense either. I think they're trying to figure out what's going to work for them in the playoffs. And this might be a game where they're going to experiment quite a bit. I could definitely see that happening. Um, I'm going to go with the four-point spread. I think the Vikings are going to win 24-20. to Um, As much as I want to pick the Giants, you have to be realistic here. The Vikings are the better football team right now. Uh, Dalvin Cook is going to run all over this defense, um, even with Landon Collins back on the active roster. I just don't know how the Giants were able to hang in there. Plus, the Giants historically do not play well in Minnesota. It's been since 2004 since the Giants have won Minnesota. And, yes, 2010 doesn't count, as we discussed before, when the Metro Dome had that snowstorm issue. Uh, we had to play that game in Detroit. So, Who won in 2019? Minnesota did. 
was that oh that was in new york yeah yeah Mm -hmm. well hey you've always got the nfc championship game in the year 2000 2000 yeah (laughs) never forget they just interviewed kerry collins about that this week on the giants youtube channel i'm like it's been so long ago um yeah it, it was a day it was a day 41 nothing Gabe says 24-23 Vikings, question mark. Greg Joseph or Gano will win it. Well, Greg Joseph is very long overdue for potentially blowing a game. I think this is the fourth week in a row that he has gotten all of his extra points. So, Gabe, that gives me some hope. It was very ugly to start the season with extra points. And somehow they still kept pulling off these, these wins and tying it and getting into overtime. Even though I know there was one game where Greg Joseph missed three extra points. So yeah, it, it's bound to happen. I guess you'd like to see him ruin it now and not later, but <laughs> I don't think it'll be this week. We have one more prediction. Obviously I just went 24, 20 Vikings, our third co-host who was disappointed. He could not be here tonight, decided to film this for us and we'll play it. Hopefully the sound works. Here we go. How's it going guys? Hank here on my way to MSG. So apologies for not being able to make this live stream, but let's talk a little bit about my prediction for this week's game against the Minnesota Vikings. I wouldn't say that an upset is necessarily out of the realm of possibility. I mean, we've seen some crazy wins from the Giants all season long. And you you look at what happened with Washington, you definitely have to feel slightly more confident. However, my concerns are simply this. Number one, the Giants do not have a top-tier wide receiver to counter with what Minnesota has in Justin Jefferson. Number two. We also are without a true number one corner because it doesn't look like a Dory Jackson will be playing this week in Minnesota. So unfortunately, I do not see a win, but I think the Giants can probably make it a close one. I'm going to say Minnesota wins by a final score of 22 to 17. So that's my prediction for you guys. Tom, Sam, I hope you're all doing well, and I will be back next week. (laughs) <laughs> thanks hank there you have it hank's our little historian he likes to give in fun facts for us but he was the one that told us about that 2004 thing but um mm-hmm. all right so clean sweep for minnesota oh yeah. boy yeah <laughs> yeah like on a giant show clean sweep for minnesota i want to say sally before we go could this be a potential rematch in three weeks from now in the wild card round I guess it could. I guess it could. And um, I would welcome that. I would welcome that over the other options for sure. (laughs) No offense, but I don't want to play Detroit again. Really? No. Yeah. I mean, yeah. The the divisional games are always a crapshoot. For sure. And I just, I love Detroit. I know that's, that's wrong. You're not supposed to love your divisional foes, but I love their team. I mean, Dan Campbell, I, they just have so much emotion. I'm probably biased from hard knocks, obviously, but <laughs> I, I really like where they're going. And I've always just loved them. You know, they're like, they've just never had any success. So you can't hate them. And um, I don't know. I just, I don't want to lose to them or play them at all. So Giants, hopefully. Right. Although who would be the lowest seed? <laughs> Sammy. Uh I think we lost, we lost Tom there for a second. Am I back? Yeah, you just got laggy. Okay, sorry. Yeah, there's a storm coming in here uh soon. But yeah, I soon. think Detroit is seven. But if so if San Francisco leapfrogs the Vikings, which is possible, mm-hmm. be a three six Giants Vikings matchup. Right. Okay, got it. So that's how that would work. I, I don't think a two to seven is likely unless we lose two out of three, which if the Eagles bench all their starters week 18, I think we probably beat them. Right. So, and they probably will. I mean, right. probably. at least with Hertz in his, the situation he's in possibly not playing. Yeah. Right. But we will see Sam, anything you want to add here before we let Sally go tonight? 
No, but you were a great guest. Thank you so much for coming oh, on, you. especially at the last minute. Uh, thank you. you. I wish I wish I prepped. I was really just uh, no, you were great. it there, but thank you. It's really fun. Awesome. Thank you so much for your time, Sally. Um, yeah. Make sure to go check out her show, the Believe in Vikings show, and her other podcast as well, uh, Sports in the City. Is that correct? Sports and the City. But you can Sports just, it's all in my city. bio on my bio. So it's easy, easier. We'll definitely but, we'll post yeah. the link. Yeah. We'll post the link to it in for the YouTube sure. video. But. Bye, Gabe. Nice to meet you too. Skull Sally. <laughs> okay, guys. Well, good luck uh, Saturday. Wow. And Merry Christmas. Yes, Thank Merry you. Merry Christmas. Yeah. Merry Christmas. Bye. All Talk right. to you soon. Take care. Bye. Bye. All right. That was Sally uh, from the Believe in Vikings show. Sam, what a great guest. Uh, yeah. That's Gabe, great. Uh, apologies. You couldn't be on with us. Um, but. You know, it's kind of like when Gabe got the flu three years ago, <laughs> I met him at a bar on New Year's Eve and was not expecting to meet him. I love this. And now story. I've known Gabe for three years. So now I guess Gabe getting sick again led us to meeting Sally. As, as, as shitty as that sounds, like Gabe's and now immune next system time, is like fate. Gabe's immune system makes things happen. Is it? Yeah. Well, Gabe and Satin, <laughs> next time. If the Giants play the Vikings in the playoffs, we have to get both Gabe and Sally on here together, potentially, to talk about the playoff matchup. We might have a, a packed house if the Giants play the Vikings. But, um, hey, I wasn't right. Technically, Tudo did pick the Giants. Yeah. All right. We got, we got one Giant in there. Yeah, we got one Giants. But, um, Sam, any final thoughts here before we sign off for the night? I know we're about to catch some Thursday night football, Jaguars, Jets. So yeah, looking forward no. to that. Um, nope, just that uh, I'm excited for a weekend filled with football and the holiday weekend. Um, a little, little nervous for um, for this game upcoming, but I think that we're going to put our all into it. Yeah. And um, yeah, I hope everyone has a wonderful holiday this weekend and um, enjoy some time off. Hopefully. Absolutely. Um, happy Hanukkah. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Obviously, we'll be back next week before the new year starts. But um, yeah, on that note, appreciate you all for watching us. If you want to watch our extended interview or exclusive interview with Sally, it will be up on our YouTube channel. We'll, we will share the link on our Twitter and Instagram as well at Big Blue Avenue. Appreciate all the support, everybody. We'll be back next week. And without further ado, let's go. Big blue.